Um, so if we think about in comparison, so we've been talking about a bit about the um, the other in sort of uh, private type uh, corporations who might be competing with this. Yeah. Uh, but it's also going to compete in a way, even though it was never, I think um, Elon Musk has never come out and talked really about uh, it competing with something like the SLS. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has steered away from directly talking um or addressing that he's, he, i think he's maybe talked about it but not um you know come out and said it is going to out compete the sls in whatever forms no I, I, yeah he steered away from it probably largely because nasa are such important customers for them and elon's a big oh, yeah. nasa fan anyway i mean so and, and obviously the sls is one of nasa's biggest projects if not their biggest project in terms of money anyway, at least Certainly a big Apparently. project. Yeah, I don't know what portion of the budget, but it's it's a you know it's an expensive piece of kit. So it can't be good to be, you know, seeming like you're in direct competition with your biggest or one of your biggest customers. No. So no. he steered away from that, but the, the implications of you know because he was talking in the in the talk about all the other possible uses of of the ITS getting to places like Europa and stuff like that, and a Europa mission is one of the only. SLS missions that are slated for the you know possible launch in the next few decades, and so yeah. the fact that you the fact that if this thing works and it does you know it's fully reusable and the payload to low Earth orbit is way bigger than the than the SLS can possibly hope to launch. So the payload to any any other destination in the solar system is also going to be much bigger. Yeah, the SLS was uh, what was it seventy to one hundred and thirty tons to low Earth orbit. So, yeah, like maxed out 130 tons, I think, to low Earth orbit, whereas yeah. this ITS thing can do, is it 550? 500, is it, or 550? 550 is what they were estimating. <sighs> yeah, and, and so the, that, that, uh, you don't really, you don't, there isn't a class of rockets that's heavier than super heavy. <laughs> no. But, um, if there is one, the ITS is the only, only rocket that really falls in that bracket. Yeah. Uh, but, so you have to then think about, so obviously p the people are starting to now talk about, and I think we've seen a few comments uh, on some of our videos um, about how this kind of makes the, uh, the SLS look like a bit of a joke. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's been some skepticism for a while in the space community about whether the SLS was ever a good idea to build anyway. Yeah. Is it really a good use of NASA's money when you have companies like SpaceX um, yeah. sort of ha have huge plans for the future like this. The SLS is kind of using old tech. I mean, a lot of it's sort of based on space shuttle launch mm -hmm. systems. Yeah, the solid and rocket boosters on the sides are almost essentially the space shuttle ones, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's mega expensive and obviously completely expendable. There's no reusable part to it at all. I think it's estimated to cost about 500 million per launch, launch. At, yeah. it, at, and that's that's you know it's probably going to go up from that I, I think the general consensus is yeah yeah and, and and add to that the fact that there are only a handful of almost like token effort missions planned for it there's, there's the journey to mars which is obviously nasa's like big thing and the sls is obviously meant to be a player role in that yeah um and then there's a europa mission possibly uh hasn't i don't know if it's been properly announced or anything yet uh the, the europa like multiple flyby mission i can't remember what the status of that actually is at the moment. Uh, i think it's yeah. pretty much confirmed actually sls there's there's a i'm just looking on the um sls wikipedia page uh so they've got an, an exploration mission planned uh the europa multiple flyby mission yeah um that's going to fly launch by 2022. Uh, but there's, you know, there's, there's, I think there's four things on there. One of them, some sort of asteroid redirect crude thing, you know, that was, that's kind of been mooted. Yeah. Uh, and one of them is to send an Orion capsule uh, around the moon. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all cool missions in the absence of anything else happening. But if, if this is happening, this image on the screen, <laughs> if SpaceX are doing this, then it does make the SLS seem pretty pointless. The the problem, of course, with the, the, the SpaceX ITS and the problem with NASA 
relying on a vehicle like that is there's no real at the moment proven commercial market for the ITS. And no. so it's not like they can sit around and, you know, hope that this thing succeeds when it's an extremely high risk and stuff. If they build the SLS, then at least they have a, a solid program they know will happen and they can plan missions around it as opposed yeah. to something that is um, sort of pie in the sky at the moment, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, at the moment is essentially just a concept on a drawing board. A apart from the fact that you've got prototype engines stuff. and yeah, they have built stuff, they have built stuff. So that's not fair saying it's just a pr uh, concept. But no. yeah, I mean, you can't pin with your hopes. You can't say, you know, let's launch our, our new sort of flagship mission to Europa on this rocket that's sort of just just exists in sort of renders and CAD models at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and, and also is not being designed necessarily with the, with these exploration missions of these types in mind. Yeah, they're almost like a more a slightly more long term use of it. Mars is the first goal. Uh, what what is sorry the like a Europa mission? Is there a long term use of the ITS? Uh, the ITS. Yeah. Like a more like a more like yeah. Once we've got the Mars trips routine and nailed down, then we may, might think about you know sending something to Europa. Yeah, um, my suspicion is though, um, and I've I've always thought the uh, the SLS they should have gone and and tried to make more use of the commercial market. And again, it was tr maybe at the time it wasn't so obvious. Um, made use of the commercial market to launch, you know, on rockets like the Falcon Heavy, say, uh, yeah. and 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 spend the, spend you know a quarter of the money to, that they've had to spend and will spend on developing the SLS to develop things like you know, in orbit f refueling stations, all this sort of stuff, uh, which is, you know, maybe not a proven concept yet, but go that direction as opposed to building a whole new rocket architecture and, and accessing the outer parts of the solar system that way. Um, but having said that, you know, they've gone down this route now and we'll end up with some cool missions out of it. So that's nice. But it even even with the ITS being designed, you know, for initially a, a slightly different use case, let's say, yeah. By the time the SLS is flying regularly or sem semi regularly, uh, I would not be surprised if it does look like it's just a bit of a waste of money. Yeah, sure. I mean, some people are the, the real pessimist, or the real pessimist approach would say the SLS will never fly a mission at least. But yeah. but even people say that okay, maybe they'll fly three or four and then they'll be retired. And I, I I don't know. I can kind of see that maybe happening. We'll have to just wait and see how much of a, of a real like gap there is between. That's, I mean, they've spent if they fly three or four missions, uh, that's a a very expensive program. <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah, it's it's, it's cost about eight eight billion, I think, up till now, and they haven't obviously, you know, I think it might be projected to cost up to thirty five billion to build or something like that, and then it's going to cost five hundred to maybe even you know five hundred million at least to launch it every time. Yeah, uh, probably cost more. Yeah. Which is crazy considering that, well, we'll talk about the cost of this thing in a bit, but Elon's, um, his projected cost of something like 10 billion for the development of this. How does, how does that work out being a third the price of the SLS? I'm not really sure how that works. Yeah, because that's, that's the difference when you have a, a market-driven system and a government-driven system. They just you, just, you just can't cut costs in the same way you know that that the system is against you if you build it through a, a traditional government program essentially yeah but yeah i think i mean nasa has obviously had and continues to have a really important role in science and exploration and i can see oh, yeah. as, as as you know more and more commercial interests move into space and there's like colonization efforts going on on other planets it will still be really useful to have a body like nasa overseeing you know, making sure things don't go too mad and make, over, making sure that scientific integrity is preserved in certain sites and things like that. And sort yeah, of doing, I mean, doing the pure exploration for exploration's sake. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to build and operate their own launch system. It seems to no, make a lot I mean, more sense for them to, you know, like maintain and build robotics. And maybe, possibly not even do that eventually. There might be companies that do that, but uh, run the missions and, and, you know, do the science essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the way that these the space agencies are going to go. It makes no sense, really, good looking forward for them to be building their own uh, launch systems. Um, but but for the, you know these types of SpaceX, NASA's going to benefit hugely from uh, 
the privatization of space and the development of reuse reusable rockets and stuff. It will still play a hugely important role in developing, you know, specialist instrumentation to do certain studies, um, you know, doing all the science associated with these missions. It basically the, the commercialization of space isn't a hindrance to NASA. It's a, it's a great benefit because they're going to get cheap flights basically to exotic places to do better science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, NASA's not, you know, I, I do think, uh, occasionally people mistake this for a kind of a changing of the guard and that private private companies are going to totally take over and NASA's just going to not be um just fade away um, yeah and it it won't it, it that's not what will happen it will just its role will just change and it will still be very important i imagine yeah yeah totally agree um but yeah you know commercializing rockets and building reuse and having that market competition in that in that sector uh is is only going to benefit nasa and, and science and and you know the most of the things that nasa has stood for they've got rocketry to a place where it could be taken over by private companies um, and i know spacex had a lot of help in developing their rockets from various you know a agencies governmental agencies including nasa a and obviously they're its biggest customer or were i don't know if they still are um, yeah i think i think they might be especially with if you consider uh, commercial crew as well as this the cargo resupply stuff for the ISS. Um, but I, I think that there's the like American defense stuff is going to be also like a massive lucrative thing for SpaceX if that deal goes through. Yeah. 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 So generally, I think if we, if we think about the SLS again, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited for the SLS because we'll get some cool missions out of it. But um, yeah, and it's going to be it's, it's going to be a beast to watch that thing launch as well. Yep, it's a cool big rocket. So yeah. you know, I can't really complain. But it it could be by the time it's it's kind of on the launch pad, flying regularly, it could look like a bit of a bit of a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah.